We good? <laughs> we are live. Awesome. Hey, everybody who is uh, watching on YouTube, thank you for joining us. Yes. This is our first attempt at a live stream video uh, play reading. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Bradley. I kind of got this whole project going, pushed the ball down the hill, and I have all these awesome people here that are helping make this a reality. A lot of uh, theater companies in our community uh, had to make the decision to close. And so uh, this is kind of an effort to bridge that gap between uh, actual productions and uh, when they come back in a few months. So this is uh, our awesome crew and cast. Uh, if everyone could introduce yourselves, that would be great. Let's start with uh, Joy. Hi, I'm Joy. I'm reading for Cass. Everybody, I'm Sam Gilstrap. I'm reading for Kip. Hi, I'm Margaret Norwood. I'm reading for Lois Coleman. Hi, I'm Cindy Parr. I'm reading for Carla. Uh, I'm Bradley Abeda, and I'll be reading for Glenn. Hi, I'm Ben Hilzer, and I'll be reading for Captain Mike. Hello, I'm Stephanie Hesse, and I'll be reading for everyone else. And I did forget to announce the uh, the name of the show. This is, <laughs> this is Wonder of the World by David Lindsay Abair. Uh, and hi, I'm Dan. I'll be doing some sound effects, and I will be uh, reading all the stage directions. This is going to work like uh, traditionally a uh, table read would, where your stage manager will read uh, whatever is necessary for you guys out there to get a picture of what's going on. So without further ado, here we go. Wonder of the World, Act One, mm -hmm. Scene One, lights up on Cass, packing a suitcase in her bedroom. Nearby, a television plays a Marilyn Monroe movie. Cass is half watching the TV while she packs. A door slams off stage. Cass looks up, frozen. Hey, sweetie. Guess who's home for lunch? Just a second. Cass, where are you? You'll never guess what I got. Oh, hey. There you are. Hi, honey. I, I brought lunch. Oh, yeah? You know what it is. Uh, jello? It's aspect, molded in the shape of a fish. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Like in the old movies. Remember you said you wanted, you wanted to try aspect. It's got chunks of trout in it. When do you come home for lunch? <laughs> what's, what's that? A suitcase. Are we going on a trip? <laughs> uh, not exactly, no. Is this a surprise of some kind? I'm leaving you. Oh, it is a surprise. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for you to. You're leaving me. You were supposed to be at work. You were just going to run away without telling me? I was going to leave a note. Well, still. I'm really sorry. I didn't, I didn't want to have a scene. D did I do something? I don't really want to get into all that. Can you just, uh, Stand in the corner until I'm done. I, I, I feel so silly. I, I brought this aspect. I know. Uh, this is awkward for me, too. I combed the city looking for it. For you. Oh, don't try to butter me up now, Kip. It's a little late for that. <laughs> is this about what I told you last night? Can you not mention that, please? It is about last night. Uh, no. Of course not. Really, this has nothing to do with you. You don't want to talk about last night? No. My God, you're obsessed with last night. <laughs> Why do you have to come home? It makes me want to kick you in the face. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> Can you um, scooch over? I need elbow room to pack. Cass barely stops moving during the rest of the scene. She's got packing to do. You understand this is a bit of a shock for me. 
Yes, I thought it might be. I mean, just last week, we walked around the botanical gardens and came home and played Yahtzee. Yeah. I, I thought we were happy. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. Then what happened? Nothing. I just, I think I made a mistake. When? Remember that time when you proposed and I said yes? Yes. I know, I know, it was sad, right? Th that wasn't a mistake. Of course you think that, but- It wasn't. But, but what if it was? It wasn't. But what if? It wasn't. Look, look, I agreed to marry you based on what I knew to be true. Camp equals X. X will make me happy. Everything added up. And seven years later, I find out you're not X at all. You're, you're Z. And, and if you're Z, then I did the math wrong because Z is no good. I would never have said yes to Z. Nonetheless, you can't just, people just don't leave their lives. Well, sure they do. People pick up and escape to faraway places every day. What do you mean, far away? Uh, this is turning into a scene. This is what I didn't want. Well, I'm sorry, but this is all very sudden. Life can be like that, I've realized. Like that time I suddenly discovered you were an odious monster. Hey! I'm sorry. I thought this wasn't about me. I was lying when I said that. I thought as much. This is hard on me too, you know. Maybe not quite hard, but it's still hard. Because a, a part of you wants to stay? Yes, the freakish, cowardly part. All right, you're upset with me. I understand that, but we're happy. You can't just run off. Who'll do your Tuesday shift at the food co-op? And what about our book group and movie night? Huh? And what about the kids? Think of your kids. They're not my kids. They're my students. You have a life here. But I don't think it's the life I was supposed to have. It's like, do you remember that time when we were driving to Westchester for that flower show in Farfield and we were really lost? Yes. And then we finally saw a sign and you were like, hey, Farfield, we found it. And we got all happy because we knew we were on the, where we were. And so we took that exit, but it still didn't feel right. Uh huh. And it turned out that we had somehow ended up in Farfield, New Jersey instead. Yes. It's like that. I thought I knew where I was this whole time, but this morning I took a good look around and suddenly I realized I'm actually in New Jersey. But you're not in New Jersey. You're in Park Slope. Uh, why are you making me sad? I don't want to be sad. I'm a, I'm a new person today. I'm, I'm happy and, and bubbly. I'm like a tall glass of sparkling cider. Since when? Since this very second, I'm starting a new life and I, I'm brimming with expectation. There are possibilities where I'm headed. Where is that? Port Authority. I'm buying a seat on the first available bus. Kip stands in front of the door. Kip, what are you? Can't you just stay for lunch? No, I can't have lunch. Just give it a try. No. He holds out the aspic. One bite. Kip. Try the fucking aspic. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I have to go. Do you need money? I'll use the money my mother left me. Here, you, you better take this for the trip. You might get hungry. She Thank drinks you, the aspic. Thank you. So if you realize you were right to say yes, when I proposed, I mean, then maybe you'll come back? Oh, that's such a nice thought, but I don't think that's going to happen. Bye-bye. 
She closes her suitcase and exits. Scene two, lights up on two bus seats. Cass with her aspic is seated next to Lois, who is asleep and has something huge on her lap wrapped in blankets. The road signs go by so fast, don't they? Oh, 463. My old life is 463 road signs behind me. Don't you just love the smell on a bus? Oh, talk to me. I'm pretending to be asleep. Well, that's called plain possum. My husband used to do that <laughs> to avoid sex. Uh, 464, but I can spot a faker. You're a little faker. Hey, you want to strike up a conversation? No, leave me alone. My name's Cass, and I just left my husband for mysterious reasons. I don't care. Stop talking to me. I've never been to Niagara Falls before. I almost went once. A family trip. But then Kit proposed, so I stayed behind to plan our wedding. And my parents went without me. They hit a beaver on the drive up, lost control of the car, and drove into a ditch. My mother was killed, and my father's legs were crushed. Okay, your turn to share. Why can't you sit someplace else? You're a challenge, aren't you? Well, you know what? I'm your challenger. Remember when the challenger exploded? Oh, that was so sad. That man saved your life, you know. If he hadn't proposed, you would have been in that car wreck. You know what? I thought the same thing for a long time, but now I think if he hadn't proposed, I would have gone with my parents and yelled like, dad, look out for that beaver. And my mother would still be alive and we would have gone on to see Niagara Falls and maybe I would have met another man, the one that I was meant to be with instead of that two-faced deviant I married. Oops, I lost track of the road signs. <laughs> oh well, that was getting tiresome anyway. <laughs> uh, you wanna play like punch buggy? Are you on something? No, I'm just excited about all the things I'm going to do. Oh, is this a conversation? Because if it is, I want to check it off. Check it off? I have this like list of things that I wanted to do in life, but for some reason, I put it away when I married Kip. <laughs> P.S. Big mistake. Here it is. Here it is. Number 48. Strike up a conversation with a stranger. I've never done that before. My mother was always like, don't talk to strangers, Cass don't talk to strangers. So I never did. And you know what? Now I have no friends. Are you going to eat that aspic? No. You want it? You bet. Nothing like a good aspic. He pulls out a spoon and digs in. I'll read some of my list while you eat. Okay. Number one is find your soulmate. Ignore that check mark. That one's a do-over. Number two is learn Swedish, followed by wear a large wig <laughs> and drive cross country. You know, I haven't driven in seven years. Kip was always afraid I'd bang up his Volvo. What's in here, bass? Oh, it's trout. Damn, it's tasty. Then we've got have a baby, <laughs> wear overalls. <laughs> Uh, go parachuting. I wanted to get married while skydiving. Kip said that was insane. So we had a church service instead. Our wedding song was Close to You by the Carpenters. She was anorexic. Yeah. Sad. Eat venison. Become friends with a clown. Oh, Kip's afraid of clowns. So oh, visit a, pr a prison and witness an execution by lethal injection. <laughs> That's more of a long-term goal. Oh, go on the newlywed game. Oh, I love that show. <laughs> Me too. Only Kip refused to audition. He found that... the game crass and divisive. Is, is that why you left him? On some level, yes. Along with a few other things. What other things? I'd rather not say at the moment. I'm afraid it will shock you but I did add it to my list. Number 267, tell someone about Kip's horrifying betrayal. I was abandoned. Wow, 
Like the Lindbergh baby? The Lindbergh baby was kidnapped, not abandoned. Oh, or so the authorities would have you believe. You're weird. Who abandoned you? My husband. I came home to an empty house and a note which said I was a bad person because I drank too much and crashed cars. Hey, I almost left a note, but my husband came home for lunch. Good thing. A note is a terrible thing to come home to. I know. Bastard. Fucking. You ever been to the falls? Just once. A million years ago. We called it a honeymoon. Uh-huh. And what's that on your lap? My revenge. Oh, I see. Is it a bomb of some kind? No. A bomb? Well, I was guessing. Lois removes the blanket from a large barrel. Ta-da! Oh, look at that! It's a big barrel. Heavy, too. My legs fell asleep a while ago. Can't move. That's okay. I always wanted to know what it would feel like to be a paraplegic. My father's a paraplegic. I'm sorry, did I offend you? No, no, no. I was just thinking that I have his phone number if you have any other questions about what it feels like. So, you know, a barrel, huh? You gonna like hit him with it? Hit him with it? Again, I'm just guessing here. Niagara Falls, a barrel? Oh, you're going to Niagara Falls with a barrel right. to get your revenge. Exactly. Are you gonna like hide in it and then jump out and scare him? Are you a moron? <laughs> if I had a nickel for every I'm time. going over the falls. Oh, but you'll die. I there's the rub. The rub? Imagine it. Poor Lois bobbing up and down at the bottom of the falls, surrounded by bits and pieces of smashed pickle barrel. It's a pickle barrel? Ted loves pickles, so that'll add to the power of it all. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> I'm starting my new life and you're ending yours. That's funny to you, is it? Well, not, not so not funny so much as, you know. Hey, do you want to be my sidekick? What? Psychic. You need to learn how to segue. Look, look, number 81. Get a sidekick. You can be my Gabby Hayes. I'm going to kill myself. Right, right, but until then. I have things to do. I can't be your... I'm not ta taking no for an answer. From here on out, you're my second banana. <laughs> hey, Gabby, Gabby, there's a sign. Niagara Falls. 346 miles! Yeah! Blackouts. Scene three. Lights up on a hotel room. Oh, look! There's only one bed. I don't take up much room. Ooh, let's be lesbians for the weekend. I'm gonna put this barrel in the tub to make sure it's watertight. Lois goes into the bathroom with the barrel. Oh, okay. Well... We'll just skip the lesbian tryst. Maybe I can, you know, jump straight to have sex with a bellhop instead. Wait until I go out through the falls. I don't want to walk on anything. Aren't I irrational? Cass goes to the bed and bounces on it. <laughs> this is another thing my mother wouldn't allow. Bouncing on the bed. <laughs> I'm disobeying everyone. I can get a second room. No, no, no. I like sharing. It's like a slumber party. <laughs> Cass belts Lois with a pillow. Don't ever do that again. My mother was suffocated with a pillow. <gasps> I'm so sorry. Who suffocated her? No one. It fell on her face when she was sleeping. It was a very large and heavy pillow. I think someone made that story up. What are you getting at? My father would never lie. He was a gentle and sweet man. So long as I didn't walk in front of the TV. What's in that flask anyway? Nothing, it's empty. After all these years of drinking, I've developed a nervous tick. Let's see what I mean. 
I have no control over it. That reminds me, I got to get me some Jim Beam. Listen, uh, I don't know. I know you don't know me or anything, but after I kill myself, could you do me a favor? Yes. I'm going to give you my brother-in-law's number. I'm sure Ted is staying there. Can you call him and explain what I've done? Sure. And tell him that I was really sorry for being a raging alcoholic and that I mm. wish I could turn back time mm. and then tell him that I can't and that I killed myself because he abandoned me, which is an mm. irresponsible and rotten thing to do. And I hope he lives with that festering guilt until he dies mm. and make sure that last bit is really scary. Say it in a damning deep voice. Oh, I'm, I'm not so good with voices. No. Well, listen to this. Hey there, boo boo. I'm gonna get me a picnic basket. Okay, it's still rough, but I'm, I'm working on it. I, I, I got a number of funny voices. It's, it's good to have projects. Yes, it is. I make mosaic tabletops. Crafty. I do macrame. Hey, look at this. Lois pulls out a macrame purse. Uh, from the barrel, the words I love bingo have been stitched into it. I made it myself. Oh, it's adorable. Thank you. <laughs> you can teach me macrame? Sure, it's really easy. What's you? No, I can't teach you macrame. I'm going to kill myself. What is the matter with you? Uh, sorry, just looking for things to do. I'm making myself a drink. Oh, oh, here's something. Ask big questions. Do you want to philosophize? Hell no. Woo! I found the mother load. Last month, I asked Kip what he thought about the afterlife, and he looked at me like I had slapped him. Did you? Well, no. Oh, uh, that's too bad. I love stories where women slap men. What a philosophize like in the old days. You know how people used to sit around and just ponder the mysteries of the universe? No, I don't believe anyone ever did that. Of course they did. Before there was TV and crack cocaine, people used to talk to each other. Here, here, I'll start. Do you believe anything is ever really meant to happen? I gotta get some ice. Lois leaves the room. In high school, I was a lifeguard at the municipal pool, and the only person I ever saved from drowning was Kip. That's how we met. I saved his life. I used to think that was fate, but now I think it was just a coincidence. A coincidence that eventually led to the death of my mother. So now I'm trying to correct the mistake I made all those years ago, which isn't really possible, of course, because dead people don't come back to life, or at least I don't believe that they do. And yet you show up ready to die. And I'm thinking, is this some kind of second chance thing? I'll bet it probably is. Your lips are flapping, but I don't hear no English coming out. I think maybe I'm supposed to save your life. I'm here for you, lady. I've got your back. You know what I want to do tomorrow? I hope it doesn't involve talking. Well, first, we should go to the Cave of the Winds and the Hurricane Deck. And then I want to ride on the Maid of the Mist. What is that? What? It's the boat ride that rides around the bottom of the falls. Oh, hey, that sounds fun. Better than dip deep sixing yourself, huh? Not at all. It'll be good to see the water up close. Know what I'm in for. I wonder what Kip's doing. I bet it's not nearly as fun as a boat ride. <laughs> you think you think he's happy that I'm gone? Probably. I just wonder if he's happy. Lights cross fade from them to scene four. Kip sits on another part of the stage. It's night and he's wrapped in blankets. <laughs> Sitting in a dark room lit only by the blue glow of a television, Kip is sobbing as he watches his wedding video. We hear <laughs> organ music and Cass taking her vows. <laughs> Voice of Cass on the wedding video. I, Cass, take thee, Kip, to be my lawful wedded husband. <laughs> Kip hits rewind on the remote control. We hear the I tape cast, rewind a little. I, Cass, take thee, Kip. 
Kip rewinds again. I, Cass, take thee, Kip. Lights fade on Kip. No! Scene five. Lights up on a wooden walkway at the base of the falls. Steps lead up and off stage to what is apparently the hurricane deck. Cass and Lois enter in yellow raincoats. They yell over the deafening roar of the falls. It's taller than I remember. That's good. Less chance of surviving. It's so loud. I didn't know it would be so loud. What? Oh, I didn't know it would be so loud. I can't hear you. I have water in my ear. Oh, tilt your head and shake it. What? Tilt your head and shake it. Yes, he's my favorite actor. Barbara, a tourist, wearing a large wig and the same yellow raincoat, enters. Oh my goodness, would you look at that? She takes a picture. <laughs> it's so big, isn't it? Uh, yes, I feel like an itty bit of ant. My name is Cass. Oh, hello, Cass. I'm Barbara. This is my friend, Lewis. It's so nice to meet you. There's the boat. It's big. I don't have, hope I have, I hope I don't land on it when I go over. My friend is going to kill herself. Oh, that's sad. Oh, look at the captain. His hat is so cute. Maybe I'll sleep with him. Ooh. Is that a wig? Yes, it is. May I buy it for, from you? Oh, whatever for. I've always wanted one. I'll, I'll give you $100. All right. They exchange <laughs> the money and the wig. Barbara is totally bald. Lois, unaware of the exchange, turns around and is stunned to see the women change so radically. Oh! Cass, that wig suits you. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Do you feel alive? I feel so alive right now. I'm looking forward to everlasting peace mm. in the great beyond. Oh, you're funny, Lois. Funny and sad at the same time. Miss Kip. What? She misses Kip. No, no, I don't. No, I take it back. I was momentarily insane. <laughs> I think you both are crazy. Glenn and Carla enter, also in raincoats. They are in their 60s, and like everyone else, they're yelling. Hey, does this walkway lead to the hurricane deck? Yes! yes. Thank, Thank you. you! It's beautiful, isn't it? It's breathtaking. We're on our honeymoon. That's sweet, elderly honeymooners. Oh, we prefer the term late bloomers. Whatever. What are your names? Well, I'm Carla. And I'm Glenn. Nice to meet you. I'm Cass, and this is Barbara. She just bought my wig. <laughs> oh, thank you. Who's that? Oh, that's my friend, Lewis. Doris. Lewis. What? These two are nuts. What? <laughs> nuts. Aren't these raincoats clammy? Oh, yes. You can smell the other people who've worn them. That's true, but things are different in Brazil. <laughs> Everyone ready for the hurricane deck? I know I am. Oh, you all go ahead. We'll just catch up. But we want to get a couple pictures. OK. Cass, Lois, and Barbara head up and out. Once they're out of earshot, all right, cut that out, they're gone. You think that was her? Oh, it's hard to tell, but I think so. Takes cell phone out of her raincoat and dials a number. How did I do? Seem genuine? Oh, you were pushing it with the raincoat stuff. I was making conversation. We'll make less of it next time. You got it, thanks for the feedback. I think we found her. She's in Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls. The waterfall. Yes, we will keep an eye on her and let you know for sure. We'll keep an eye on her. An eye on her. An eye. Eye. An eyeball. We'll call you back.
back. Blackout. Scene six, lights up inside the control room of the Maid of the Mist. Captain Mike mans the wheel. Cass stands next to him in a blue disposable rain poncho, still wearing her wig, taking in the sights. We hear the falls far off. Captain Mike speaks into a PA system while he steers the ship. And this boat got its name from an Indian princess who was sent over the falls in a canoe as a sacrifice to the thunder god Hinam. And some believe her spirit still roams the caves beyond the falls, the maid of the mist. <laughs> it's spooky if I say it like that, it makes the trip more enjoyable. Yes, you're quite the showman. Thanks. You should know, by the way, I'm sort of bending the rules, letting you in the wheelhouse like this. Uh, I appreciate it. Figured you deserved special treatment. Most passengers don't stay on the boat five times in a row. I was getting up the nerve to talk to you. Really? Yeah, I saw you from the hurricane deck and I was telling my friend how I wanted to have sex with you. Oh. That's my friend down there. The one vomiting on the deck. She's an alcoholic. Hey, what's this do? Can, yeah, can you can you not pull things while you're up here? <laughs> oh, sorry. It's the new me. I'm taking the bull by the horns. Olay. <laughs> oh, you speak Spanish. N no. I find Latino men so handsome, or as you people say, muy muy guapo. <gasps> I don't speak Spanish. And I don't speak Swedish. Yet, life is so full of possibilities. Do you find me attractive? Sure. You're such a flirt. <laughs> Are you trying to seduce me? You sailor boy, you. No. Why not? Aren't I pretty enough? No, you're very pretty. I just... Oh, it's, it's the wig, isn't it? The humidity makes it frizzy. <sighs> I notice you're wearing a wedding ring. Oh, this? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just a... a, a I, I found this. <laughs> oh, oh, I was camping in the desert and setting up a tent and, you know, there was. <laughs> uh, this is nothing. She throws open the door behind her. Hey, everybody! Free ring! Outside free. the crowd cheers, Cass tosses the ring to them and slams the door shut again. <sighs> Hold on. You're kind of all over the place, aren't you? Yes. I used to speak lucidly. My thoughts used to connect with each other, but someone disappointed me in an unspeakable way. And now my synapses don't work all the way. Was it your husband? What? Who disappointed you? No, I don't have a husband. Ah, excuse me. In 1859, a French tightrope walker named Blondin went across the falls on a three inch thick rope with his terrified manager on his shoulders. Among the spectators was King Edward VII who said afterwards, thank God it is over. Please never attempt it again. So what do you do in real life? I'm a ninth grade math teacher. Oh, a marm. A school marm. No, I teach math. No, I know. It... And what's your husband do? I said I don't have a... Oh, are you trying to trick me? I was married once. Were you? Her name was Dinah. She had a cotton candy cart up by the wax museum. The sweetest woman alive. We met bowling. Her hair was all up in this lump with a pencil holding it together. You ever see that? 
Sure. I used to call her Lumpy. It was a nickname. Cute. <laughs> yeah. She was something. <laughs> Until she turned on you, right? Until she transformed into a grotesque stranger. No, that never happened. Oh, I assumed because you said, you know, was married. No, we, um, oh, never mind. No, no, go ahead. Well, you know those wholesale warehouse stores? You become a member and get huge amounts of food for pennies. Oh, love the Costco. <laughs> you can buy a 20 pound bag of Cheetos for $4. Exactly. Well, I enjoyed shopping at Costco, but Dinah thought it was silly. Said the food was just too darn big. So you divorced? No. I came home late from the falls one night and the house was so quiet, like cathedral quiet. Has your house ever been so quiet you thought you might stop breathing? Yes, I've lived like that for years. And I go into the kitchen and Dinah is lying on the floor and there's a restaurant size four gallon jar of peanut butter smeared across the tiles. She was apparently putting the jar away. It was kept on one of the highest shelves and she lost her grip and the peanut butter plummeted and smashed against her forehead. The coroner said that the weight of the blow could have killed a gorilla. She died nearly instantly. My goodness. I don't know why I was so stubborn. We didn't need all that peanut butter. A small jar would have been plenty. She must have gotten hungry waiting for me. And the thing is, I stopped to rent a video on the way home. Mm. And I think if I hadn't just been a little earlier, if I hadn't stopped for the video, maybe she wouldn't have reached for that gargantuan jar. What video was it? What? What video? What'd you rent? Uh, I, th I think it was Caddyshack. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a good movie. I, I guess. <laughs> sure, with the, with the gopher and everything. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's funny. <laughs> well, I didn't actually get to watch it. Oh, that's right, that's right, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my husband's right, I'm such a scatterbrain. Husband? Oh, did I say husband? I meant houseboy. <laughs> I have a, a number of servants and they're always teasing me. So husband, houseboy, see how they sound alike. <laughs> Excuse me. In 1911, Bobby Leach survived a plunge over the falls in a cylindrical steel barrel. Years later, while vacationing in New Zealand, he slipped on an orange peel while walking down the street developed complications, had his leg amputated, contact, contracted gangrene poisoning, and died. <sighs> do many people survive? The falls? Some do. I did. You didn't go over the falls. Sure I did. <gasps> Ask Pete down there, he'll tell you. Wow, you're like a daredevil. I didn't even use a barrel. That seems foolish. I was pretty upset about Dinah. Oh, I see. It's hard to bounce back from something like that. So you, you threw yourself in? Yeah, <sighs> I went over, I went under, and popped up downstream, bruised, but kicking. <laughs> he pulled me out. Go ask him. Go, oh, I'm gonna. Everything became clear after that. It was like God reached out and caught me, told me to keep going. Don't lose faith. He gave me a sign. Wow. That's what I need. Maybe not that holy God mumbo jumbo, but a sign of some kind. 
something to believe in. You want to take the wheel for a few minutes? Really? That doesn't seem dangerous to you? We're in a smooth pass. I'll be right here. All right, then. Hands on 10 and 2. Like this? Uh-huh. Captain Mike stands close by and occasionally helps her steer. doing great a little uh, to the left oh there you go <laughs> oh this is quite an honor Cass yes I really like you <laughs> you do yes and I meet a lot of people on this boat thousands but the fact is I'm basically a very lonely man So am I. Not that man bit, but, you know, everything else. And I haven't been with someone since Dinah, so I'm completely out of practice, and I don't, I don't know how to say the right things, but if, if you meant what you said before about, you know, I'd like to spend the night with you, I hope that's not too forward. Let's Dock this dinghy. <laughs> Blackout. Scene seven. The hotel room, littered with tiny empty liquor bottles. The barrel is out and upright. Lois is in the barrel, a shower cap on her head, drinking from a tiny bottle. Cass enters wearing big overalls. Good morning. Hi. What, what are you doing? I'm scraping the bottom of my barrel. Oh, I'm famished. How about you? Cass goes to the phone and dials room service. I didn't know where you went. You left without me. Like a, a quart of OJ and a stack of flapjacks. Room 232. Thanks. I searched that boat from top to bottom. I thought you might have fallen overboard. I spent the night with the captain. <laughs> Tramp. You wouldn't believe the things that I checked off my list. Oh, good God, I don't want to know. You drink all this liquor? Aren't the bottles cute? Everything's so little around here, little and drinkable. Get out of the barrel. You look like a rodeo clown. This hat came free with the room. Free hats, free soap, and little itty bitty bottles of hooch. Let's go. I don't ever leave me like that again. I came back. When you felt like it, you came back when it was good for you. Are you mad at me? You said you had my back, but obviously you don't give a shit about me. That's all right. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. Just my barrel. Lois ducks down into her barrel. Hey, you saw my list. I'm on a spree. I gotta grab what I can. I had to go with the captain. Is he your new sidekick? No, ma'am. No, that position's been filled. I'm sorry that I left you alone. I lost my watch. What watch? My honeymoon watch. Ted bought it for me when we got married. It was engraved. Love always, it said, and I lost it. When? Today? No, on our honeymoon. Oh, well, that was a long time ago. I'm sure he's forgiven you. No, he was pissed. Still mentions it every once in a while. I was drunk and I was leaning over the railing and it just slipped off. It disappeared into the mists of the falls, just like 
I'm gonna do. Hey, enough of that talk. But Ted and I were happy once and then that watch fell off and he's hated me ever since. I'm sure he doesn't hate you. No. Call no. him up and ask him. Ask him if he hates you. No, 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 he's done with me. He said so in his letter. Dearest booze hound, I'm done with you. You're not done with me, are you? Of course not. We have a helicopter ride scheduled, remember? Oh, I hope that's room service. Oh, come in. Lois gets out of the barrel as Captain Mike enters with a box of groceries. Captain Mike was unloading the car. Ahoy, Captain! Good morning. Uh... Lois. Right. Yeah, yeah, she's the alcoholic that I was telling you about. I'm sorry I got sick on your boat, Captain. It's a common reaction to the awesome splendor of Mother Nature. <laughs> I think it was the tequila, actually. Oh, want to see what we got? We went to Costco. Cass pulls out an enormous <laughs> can of SpaghettiOs from the bag. Look at this! Wow. Cass try these. Cass tosses a giant bag of Cheetos to Lois. You've got to try these. Help! I'm shrinking! Ah, eat me! Drink me! Eat me! Drink me! Is that a barrel? What? Because, you know, I don't want to make assumptions here, and I don't know what your plans are, but going over the falls in a barrel is against the law. You know that, right? And as a member of the Niagara Falls family and its affiliated companies... No, no. This isn't a barrel, it's my bed. I sleep here. I, I have back problems and some people sleep on boards. I sleep in a barrel. I see. Time to make my bed. <laughs> she drags the barrel into the bathroom. Isn't she funny? I'm gonna have to send somebody to pick up that barrel. Hey, hey, you, Nothing. Wait. We'll have dinner, okay? And I was arrested when I went over. The law is the law. I can't let her... You won't actually do it. She won't. You know that. How do you know? Alcoholics are an irrational bunch. I've made it my job. Since I couldn't save my mother, I know that doesn't make any sense, but leave her barrel alone, okay? Okay. I'm such a softie. Mm -hmm. I should head in. I have a 10 a.m. tour. Thanks for carrying the food up. Sure. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Go on, shy boy. Can I see you tonight? No, you can't. Why not? I had fun, but I'm here to experience as much as I can. We'll do something different. Right, but I have this whole list, see? <laughs> so much to do. <laughs> and, you know, tour to flare, fling, because, you know, it's marked off. Oh. I didn't realize I was part of a scavenger hunt. <laughs> no, don't get all hurt. I have seven years of mistakes to correct. So cut me some slack, okay? I was only proposing dinner. Well, hold on. Let me see what I can do. Oh, uh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. If I have something here, where were you seven years ago? Seven years ago. Mm hmm April 26th. Gosh, I, I guess if it was April, then I would have been working the check-in desk at the Hilton. Oh. 
Is that something you can work with or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's good, good. It's just a long shot, but. Uh, uh, what, is, what is it? Nothing, nothing. We'll have dinner, okay? Okay. The bed's all made. Lois, Captain Mike is gonna overlook that barrel, but you better make sure no one sees it. Otherwise, you're gonna get us all in trouble. Now keep it under wraps or he'll take it away. Fine. I'm gonna walk the captain back to his car. Hurry back. Captain Mike and Cass exit. Lois sits alone for a couple of beats, then makes her way to the phone and dials. Hi, Willie, it's me. Is Ted there? Ted, your brother. Don't play dumb, Willie. I know he's staying with you. Put him on. Is that what he told you to say? I just want to ask him something. Yes, he is there. Goddamn liar! She slams down the phone. Lois collects herself. Then she runs into the bathroom and drags the barrel out. She's heading for the door when somebody knocks. Lois freezes. She looks at her barrel and panics. She starts to roll it into the bathroom. There's no time. Lois throws a blanket over the barrel and leaves it where it is. A key turns in the lock. Carla peeks in and looks around. Then she and Glenn enter in stolen bellhop uniforms. Clear, be quick. Look around. This place Glenn and reeks Carla of, search the room. This place reeks of booze. CD Hotel, signs of debauchery. Glenn Look at finds this. a giant can of SpaghettiOs. Look at this. Put it away, we're looking for an ID, something with her name on it. He wanted proof. Hey, looky loo. <laughs> One large wooden barrel. Lois suddenly leaps out of the closet with an iron. Ah! Mother of Pearl! Where did that come from? No one is taking that barrel! Lady, now, hold I, on a I've had bypass surgery! What are you trying to do? Nobody wants your barrel! Hey, you're that couple. That's right, you do know us. Now put that iron down. What are you doing here? We, we work for the hotel, been here for years. We're bellhops. I thought you were honeymooners. Oh, we are, but we just couldn't afford to take time off. Uh, we're very poor. So we honeymoon during our breaks. What better place, right? That's screwy. Yeah, well. Huh. All right, then. So where's our flapjacks? Flapjacks? Don't tell me you forgot them. We ordered room service ages ago. Well, no tip for you. You're the suckiest bellhops I've ever seen. No wonder you're so poor. So what are you doing here? Oh, we... <laughs> we have some uh, questions for you, a guest evaluation. We just want to make sure you're comfortable. Well, I don't have to time to fill out questionnaires. Oh, it's oral. It'll just take a sec. Jen, Glenn will tidy up while we do it. Okay. It takes him a moment, but Glenn understands. He goes back to searching while he pretends to clean. A lot to accomplish today, so I can't. Your name? Lois Coleman. Aren't you kind of old to be a bellhop? They're real liberal here. Point of departure? Port Authority. Anybody else staying in this room? Cass, we took the bus up together. Uh-huh. And do you find our facilities up to your expectations? Your gift shop sucks. Why that? No Milky Ways. And I said as much to the lady behind the counter and she gave me the stink eye, which I did not appreciate. Well, P, and how would you rate the friendliness of our hotel staff? Well, except for that cunt in the gift shop, I give it a 10. Are you looking for something? ID, we're private investigators. Wait, what? When? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not supposed to come out and say it. I know, I'm sorry, it slipped out. You blew our cover. We're new at this. We used to run a yarn store in Buffalo. A yarn store? Shut up, Glenn. We sold knitting needles, crochet hooks, stuff like that. Are you high? 
No, I'm not high. I'm just a little excited by all this. <laughs> I mean, three weeks ago, I was selling yarn. Well, I knew this was going to happen. My husband's a terrible liar. Plus, I have ADD. I've had it my whole life. Of course, we didn't know that what that's what it was back then. Everyone just thought I was flaky, but we got a diagnosis in March, which was a relief because, oh, look at the big bag of Cheetos. <laughs> oh, you gotta love him. Are you even honeymooners? Well, we've been married 38 years. Add long. You're supposed to say long years. Glenn, I'm going to punch you in the head. And she'll do it too, believe you me. Mm -hmm. We're in couples therapy? If she doesn't get her time away from me, her alone time, <laughs> she starts swinging. <laughs> Someone hired you. Hard to believe, isn't it? A husband who wants his wife back in his life. She says he just took off. Oh, really? He's very upset. But how did he? Oh, he got his hands on a Niagara Falls yellow pages and he called us. We just placed an ad and the phone rang. Isn't that weird? We're not even licensed. <laughs> he thinks maybe there's another man. Is there, Mrs. Coleman? Another man? No, there's no other man. Why, why would he? Oh, he asked us to gather evidence. Plus we wanted a positive ID. Must have cost him a lot to hire private investigators. Well, we're just starting out, so we're kind of the economy rack of PIs. Well, we're hoping to make some money because we're really strapped for cash, right, honey? Well, we lost a lot of dough on that yarn store. Before that, we ran an ice cream shop into the ground. Well, we groomed dogs for a little while. We're what you call dabblers. Always have been. Well, it never got bored, though. I left because I felt abandoned. Abandoned? There's no other man. I just wanted to give him a scare. Well, Ted obviously learned his lesson. Oh, Mrs. Coleman, we don't know any Ted. You don't? Oh, no, it's your friend that we were sent to find, Cass. Her husband found a Marilyn Monroe movie in the VCR. Niagara. Started to put two and two together. Oh, I see. She doesn't happen to have any identification around here, does she? On the nightstand. He sounds like a real nice guy. He loves her a lot, you know? Oh, here it is. Cass Harris. That's her, all right. Oh, so we're going to give him the high sign then, tell him to come on up, reconcile. You won't tell her, I hope? No. Well, we don't want her running off again. It's good these two get back together. Every marriage has its problems, right? I know we've seen some very dark days. Well, that's enough, Glenn. I wasn't going to mention the thing. She's always afraid I'm going to mention the thing. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Bye now. Oh, I'm going to kick the shit out of you. Uh, Carla pushes Glenn out the door. Lois is left alone. Lights fade on her. Scene eight. Lights up on Kip driving. Close to you by the Carpenters. Plays on the car radio. He dabs his teary eyes with a Kleenex. <laughs> Lights fade. <laughs> Scene nine. Lights up inside a small sightseeing helicopter. A lady pilot mans the controls. Cass is looking around. Lois is drinking from her flask. We hear the low hum of the helicopter motor throughout the scene. And to your right, you'll see the world famous Schoenkopf Geological Museum. Did I tell you Captain Mike, Captain Mike might be my soulmate? I don't know, did you? He worked at the Hilton and that's where my parents had reservations. So he's probably the man that I was supposed to meet seven years ago. Makes sense, right? Sure, in your world. On March 29th, 1848, a strange silence fell into the city of Niagara Falls. Huge chunks of ice had formed a dam in the river, stopping the flow of water and leaving the falls dry. This situation lasted two days until the dam broke apart and the water began to flow again. Can you do a, a loop-de-loop -loop in this thing? Not without getting fired. Oh, come on, live, live a little. Must have been surreal. When? When the ice blocked the waterfall. 
imagine living with the roaring in your sound, in the sound every day. And then one morning it's just gone. That's how it was when Ted left. He's loud too. Sure. He yelled all the time, put down that bottle. Why did I marry you? Get your head out of the toilet. The world can change in a second, can it? You're pouring yourself a cup of coffee and suddenly you find a letter on the table and God throws his unrelenting light on you. And in that moment, your entire life collapses in front of your eyes. Geez, somebody get this lady her lithium. I blame my malaise on my father. They say depression is hereditary. That and alcoholism. I had a lousy father too. I never said my father was lousy. When I was a baby, he would toss me in the air too high, way too high. I got tangled up in a ceiling fan when I was eight months old. How's that for a crappy old man? I bet he regrets it. Oh, sure. Well, what do I care about regret? My inner ear's been giving me problems ever since. And I've spent the rest of my life conquering my irrational fear of heights. <laughs> You're a helicopter pilot. Yeah, and I'm shitting bricks every second this twirling tin cans in the air. We hear the buzz of another helicopter nearby. Carla and Glenn appear in their own helicopter. Glenn mans the controls while Carla spies with binoculars. Oh, look! Another helicopter! Awful close, isn't it? We're all professionals up here, ma'am. Sorry about that. Pass, press the wrong doodad. Oh, look who it is! It's that nice couple we met at the falls. <laughs> Cindy, are you there? Sorry, it cut out a little bit. I'm trying to find my spot. <laughs> oh no. All right, 34 halfway down. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, look who it is. It's that nice couple we met at the falls. Oh, she <laughs> forgot about the beards, the beards, the beards. Oh. Glenn and Carla quickly <clears throat> put on false beards. Oh, right. <laughs> what are they doing? They've put on false beards. Oh, <laughs> oh they're such jokers. You guys crack me up. <laughs> Oh, too late. She spotted us. Wave. <laughs> oh, you two nut jobs. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's get out of here. Punch it, you pinhead. Oops. Oh, there they go. Uh, bye bye. <laughs> what a hoot. <laughs> They're a sweet couple, don't you think? They're all right. People used to say that Kip and I were a sweet couple. <laughs> Ted and I were semi-sweet for a few years. Yeah, Kip and I prided ourselves on sweetness <laughs> and normalcy. We were like yummy little bonbons. <laughs> but he let you down, right? <sighs> what? Oh, I've heard it a million times up here. What was it, another woman? Diet pill addiction? Necrophilia? Kip has a sweater drawer. The son of a bitch. And I noticed that he was always wearing the sweaters from the front of the drawer, but never the ones from the back. So I, I thought I'd rotate the sweaters. You must add a lot of time on your hands. While I was rotating, I found a box. A box of kitty toys? Oh, if only! If only it had been kitty porn. Oh, this is a good one. It was a carved wooden box that we had bought on our honeymoon in Mexico. I love Mexico. Dos cervezas, por favor. 
and it brought back all these nice memories of beaches and Mayan temples. And then I opened it and inside were Barbie heads. Barbie heads? From Barbie dolls! But, but just the heads, detached, 11 of them. And they, they all have crazy mangy hair and, and dulled faces and a strange disinfectant smell. Uh-oh. And I thought, well, well, this is strange. Not just the Barbie heads exactly, but the fact that, that Kip had a secret. Did you confront him? Yes, I did. That night, I held out the box and I said, what is this? And his eyes got real big and he started sweating and then he, he cried. And then I thought, wow, this can't be good. And after an hour of utter silence, he said, okay, Cass, it's like this. And then he proceeded to tell me that he had read about a man who would swallow a Barbie head and derive extreme sexual pleasure from passing it. Ew. <laughs> oh, for the love of God. <laughs> he was so curious that he wanted to try it. And so, so he did. And he, and he liked it. And then he started collecting the heads and, and cleaning them and, and naming them. And what I found was, was his little collection. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. That can't be good for the colon. Wait, you said he named the heads? Yes. And this one is Vivian. Oh, I'm gonna oh. vomit. Oh, what in Christ what was he thinking? The helicopter starts oh. swerving. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I stole one and oh. I carry it as a reminder. And every time I miss Kip or think of going back to him, I pull out Vivian and it all comes flooding back to oh, me. Please keep that in your pocket. All those years, while I was folding our clothes, he was living the strange second life, secret, totally separate from me. And that night I thought, who is this sleeping next to me? What else has he not told me? What else is churning inside of him? He made me feel so empty. Because I had no secrets. I had nothing extra inside me. I'd never done anything without considering him. And that's why I came here. Oh, to fill myself up, to stuff myself with whatever I want, guard myself until I am ready to burst. He's coming here. Who is? Your freaky husband. Those people aren't honeymooners. They're private investigators. He's hired them to find you. No, Kip wouldn't chase me. He's not the type. He wants to talk things over. Oh, no, no, no talking, no scenes. I told him no scenes. I have to leave. Leave? Yes. Land this thing. <laughs> I have to go. Why would he follow me? Betty wants that doll head back. Oh, take it down. Just take it down. Take it down. The pilot <sighs> takes the helicopter into a dive. The women scream. Sounds <gasps> of the helicopter descending as the lights fade. End of act one.